Hey, JRC family, and welcome to another episode of Wilding Out in the Word Wednesday. Our topic for today is witnessing for Christ. And our scripture comes from 1 Peter 3 and 15. It reads, instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Now, this particular book of 1 Peter is a letter written by Peter, which is one of Jesus' 12 disciples, specifically Simon Peter, because Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter. Jesus told him that he would be a key leader in the early Jerusalem church. Now, he is writing to the Gentiles, which were considered heathen people because they did not worship God originally, but they were converted. They were being harassed by the Greeks and the Romans. So Peter is writing to encourage them through this time and also giving them the foundation of becoming a stronger Christian. Now, if you remember in your reading, Jesus told Peter, I will make you a fisherman of men, meaning he was going to bring many to Christ. Let's break this scripture down. First Peter three and 15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. This has to be first. When you truly feel deep respect and admiration for God, which is the meaning for revere, then your reactions to someone who says his name or there's an opportunity to talk about him, you feel the strong urge to have the conversation. It says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Now, this is important that you already always be ready to share your witness because there's always an opportunity to bring someone closer to Christ. And we are God's hands and feet. And this means as believers, it is our job to share the gospel with non-believers and bring them to Christ. But do this with gentleness and respect. Now, have you ever heard the phrase, it's not what you say, it's how you say it? Even in sharing your explanation for your faith in Christ, remain kind and be sure to be not be harsh in your word choices. It's not your job to make non-believers feel bad for not being, being or believing in Christ yet. In that same sense, we are not to be offensive to those who are in disagreement with our decision. Remember, you are a representative of God and how they view Christianity will rest on how you present him to them. Now, witnessing can be a scary subject for some Christians because we have the belief that evangelism should be only left up to an ordained minister. But this is not true. You as a believer and having accepted Jesus Christ as your savior are an evangelist. Peter was not writing to the theological scholars of that time. He was writing to the Gentiles. These were people of none Jewish descent. Now with knowing this, I want to give you some practical ways as teens to share the gospel to others. The first thing you have to do is learn and articulate the gospel. Read the word of God. Let the word minister to your heart and truly allow the words of the biblical writer to rest in your mind. Ask questions, write them down and search for the answers. Matthew 7 and 7 says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open for you. Meaning if you begin to search, God will give you the answers. Learn to retell the stories in your own words. This speaks to your ability to interpret what you have read. The more that you can turn these stories into your own words, the better and the more fluid your witness to others will be. The second practical tip is to find ways to insert the gospel into your regular conversation. Think about things like what is the trending topics for these days or this month or this week? Um, what popular movies are out? And then put that against what the word of God says. What advisement the, the, does the biblical writers give? And bring that up in a conversation, in your, your daily conversation with friends. This allows you the chance 
to bring God up in every or your regular conversations. The third practical tip is to talk about your church. One of your questions, one of the questions I tend to ask people is, do you go to church? If they say yes, then I ask them, what's the name of your church? Or uh, what are some of the ministries that exist in your church? And if they say no, then I ask, would they consider visiting my church? And I begin to tell them about my church, my church family, our connection to our community. And then I always invite them to come to a service. Because you started the conversation with the church, this would be a great segue into Christianity and what brought you personally to Christ. You can give witness to what God has done for you, your family, your friends, and your church. The fourth practical tip is to use technology to share the gospel. Social media is one of our major platforms. Matthew 5 and 16 says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. We can always apply this to social media. People spend so much time scrolling social media these days. So let when they pass your page that they see the light of Jesus Christ actively existing there. A few example posts may be Bible trivia questions to your friends seeing if they can answer them Uh, Bible jokes that may be funny yet informative. You can always reshare your churches or your pastor's post. You can simply share scriptures. Also, you can follow young Christians and ministers who are on fire for God. So many younger Christians are developing social media platforms that address youth and the daily struggles that they encounter. So interact with these pages and share with your friends. These are only just a few post ideas, uh, ways you can utilize social media. But if the more you research, you'll find that you can get away from the just, just traditional ways of sharing God through post. The second way that you can utilize technology to share the gospel is through the Bible app. The Bible app has plenty of resources and plans that tailor to individuals that are using it. You can start a plan with your friends. You also can find out who in your contacts are also using the Bible app and therefore you can build a connection with them, a strong Christian connection that will allow you to strengthen your faith um, and strengthen your community of believers. The fifth practical tip is to build relationships with those who are considered outcast. As teens who face tons of peer pressure, sometimes you may feel that the last thing you want to do is draw more attention to yourself by hanging out with people who are considered lame or unpopular. But you must remember that most of the popular crowds are filled with people not portraying their true identity. Therefore, it's all fake. Instead, build relationship with those who are not popular, probably because they are staying true to themselves. This is a great opportunity to bring them to Christ and build a lifelong friendship because it's a strong possibility that they may be someone's boss in the future. The last practical tip for teens to witness is to seek God for help. Pray that God gives you the words to witness to others. Pray that God gives you the direction on whom to witness to. And pray that God gives you the right sense of timing in order to witness to others. Acts 1 and 8 says, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witness. These practical tips for witnessing will take you a long way in your journey as a young Christian who truly wants to be like Peter, a fisherman of men. God has done so much for us all and it's up to us to share the good news with others so that we can help them experience his glory and his blessings. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have sent to be with us, Father God. And we thank you for our ability to witness to others, Father. We ask right now that you guide us in this witness, Father God. And Lord God, as we search uh, to become closer to you, Father God, we just ask that you give us the questions and you give us the answers, Father God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord God, and your everlasting kindness that rest upon us, Father God. I thank you right now for your joy and Lord God, the peace that you give us, Father. 
I ask right now in your son Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Wilding Out in the Word Wednesday. Until next time, peace.